Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Today we will have a look at the project that I was working on for last year and a half and which finally went live. But before we do that, let's have a look what's inside of that uh, medium package. Again, something that I'm really, really excited about. Let's have a look. Ooh, nice. Another I hate tomorrow's t-shirt. And now let's have a look at the project. Today I want to do something a little bit different instead of my usually award-winning website deconstruction or CSS or JavaScript tutorial. I want to show you two websites side by side. One is an old version and one is a new version of the calls.com.au, which is an online shopping platform in Australia. And I was part of the team working on the new version. Okay, so I wanted to show you some of the CSS animations we've used and why we've decided to use CSS animations instead of JavaScript animations. We will firstly add a couple products on the old site. So I'll speed up through the experience. It's quite an ugly website, it's quite busy and I don't wanna bore you with clicking around and waiting for the site to load. So we'll speed it up. And the first thing I'll do, I'll add a Danish into my trolley. Then we'll add a couple of beers and ice cream for the kids. And now let's try to do exactly the same thing on the new shop.calls.com.au. And I'm not comparing here the speed of it or anything, just giving you idea of the flow and of the layout because I already know what I'm searching for now, okay? So Crown Danish should give us couple results. And I think this is the product I wanted to add, adding two to my trolley. And then I wanted to get the beer. I think it was Crown. Crown six pack, one of these six packs. You must be over 18 to buy this product. 1980 something, I'll blur it out so you can see my date of birth. And by the way, this is incorrect as well, just in case you want to send me some nice message on the 17th September. This is a fake date of birth, continue. We've got the crownies in the trolley. And the last thing was the ice cream. Let's go to frozen ice cream. And here it is, 10 pack of this ice cream, adding that to trolley as well. And now we should have everything in the trolley. Okay, one, two, three items. Not sure why this shows four. Oh yeah, because we've got two of these ones. Okay, that might be confusing for some people. But anyway, this is the flow on the new shop.calls.com.au and now we'll break down some of the CSS animations. The first thing we'll look at is the navigation of the main categories. So when we're clicking on any of the navigation items and drilling down, you can see that the subcategory is animating in and that is done using CSS3 animations and adding extra classes. Which means if I click on the bread and bakery, we'll see the submenu coming into the view. And if we scroll down inside of the animation pane, inside of a console, you'll see that this diff catnav list 2 has a transform animation on it and is animating to translate X minus 100. The duration, I think it's set to 0 0.4 on all of these elements. So the duration 0 0.4 and cubic by zero is the easing on it. And then if we click on it again, we'll see that the items are changing to item L3. And again, that shares the same styles. Okay, so the animation, the 
items that are animated out are then destroyed. So on the page in the DOM, there's only one container at a time. Okay, that's why we can't see the animation of the element going out. That's why we can't replay it. We can only play the animation of the elements coming in. Okay, because the other container has been destroyed after the animation is finished. Now let's have a look at the button, the button how you adding things to your trolley. This is what was called internally fed controller. Okay, as you can see the class class fed controller and inside of the trolley there is a little brother which we <laughs> internally call the diet controller. Okay, so two things exactly the same markup just a little bit different style inside of the trolley. And then there is couple animations on it as well. When you're removing from trolley, it fades out, the removing from trolley message appears, and then the final price, okay? So this has couple animations, couple containers fading in and out at the right time. And this was quite challenging element to create. And I remember when we were starting the project, a few of the guys, few of the techie guys were like, couldn't we just use the default select box, <laughs> the HTML select box? But I actually liked that challenge and tried to create it anyway. And based on the feedback from customers, which is the most important, apparently it's very, very well received. Let me know if you would want a video a detailed video explaining how the classes were set up on the Fed controller and I can create a specific video just for that. It's quite full on for this high level breakdown. Then if you look at the grid that was created using Suzy. So if you haven't checked out my other video on Suzy and the flexible grids. So Suzy is behind the grid of these tiles. A very handy tool which lets you generate your layout on the fly. Okay, so highly recommend Suzy for flexible grids without a bloated CSS. And there's a couple models, a couple things fading in and out. When the sidebar is coming out, there is an overlay on top of the products and that fades in at the same time as the sidebar is coming out. Okay, so let's try to replay it. So this is the sidebar coming out. That element is called the draw overlay. So that's the dark element fading in. And at the same time, the draw is expanding its width. And the best thing at the end, if I search for team terms, We'll get these chocolates, but it's not the chocolate themselves that I like that much, but I really enjoyed creating this model. Okay, the model fades in and scales up a little bit. And then when you start adding items, it changes the progress bar. And then when you meet the criteria, any two for $5. So if I add one more, the unlock, the saving is unlocked and the whole color scheme changes. Okay, so very cool. I really enjoyed creating this model as well. And specifically the unlocking of the savings. So just when I want to record, can you hear the water dripping? Now it stopped. I know. Ah, that's what happens when you want to record and things not going your way. But you know what? I can show you the new t-shirts. Exactly the same t-shirts. And some of you lucky guys will receive it gratis. Some of you might get it from the website. By now it might be already on the website. So check it out. I hate tomatoes.net slash store. And now when the rain is over, let's get back to the project. You might ask me why have you used only CSS animations instead of JavaScript animations? And the answer is pretty straightforward. This was an e-commerce platform, massive platform where there was no storytelling, there was no marketing page, there was no complex animations. It was all just moving things 
from one point to the other, changing states, fading in, fading out. So this wasn't a great example of where would you use GreenSock or JavaScript animations. This is a great example where CSS animations are just fine. Okay, you just want to interact with elements, change their state on a click or on a hover or bring the sidebar in. For this kind of stuff, JavaScript animation is not necessary and you can achieve the same thing using CSS. The great power of GreenSock is if you work on a storytelling website, complex animations, timeline-based animations, interactive websites, image sliders, interactive infographics, or advanced scrolling effects. So these are some examples where you definitely should look at GreenSock or some other JavaScript animation libraries. For everything else, just keep using CSS animations. And in the next video, I'll show you a couple assets, couple of screenshots with classes that I've used while working on this big project. It helped me to stay organized during the project and also it made the handover to the backend developers much easier. So that's what's coming up in my next video. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, happy coding, bye.